ammo test and review of the Federal Classic High Shock jacketed hollow point 9mm 115 grain. Their product number is 9BP. We're using the SimTest Media calibrated to ballistic gel specs plus four layers of denim. Test gun is the Glock 19. This is a new box of ammo. Found it locally for $25, 50 rounds. You always like getting those kind of deals. But this has been available for a long time. Based on my research, it looks like it was available at least back into the 1990s and possibly the 1980s as well. Here's a quick comparison for you. We have the 9BP, which we're testing tonight, 115 grains there on the far left. That's the Hydroshock with the post in the middle. That's a 147 grain. And then you have the newer HST there on the far right. So again, it is not the Hydroshock, and this could be mistaken for that if you just happen to look at the name and think it is an abbreviation. This is a very light recoiling load. Advertised muzzle velocity is 1,160 feet per second. On the 4-inch barrel Glock, my 5-shot average is 1,136 feet per second. You can see on those opening triple taps, all three of those, I had some pretty good hits. There were eight center mass and one down in the pelvic area, and I think that'd be enough to uh, hopefully stop a lot of threats. So it is a reasonably accurate ammo, light recoiling. The velocities, by the way, in the recoil, that's in the ballpark of your 115 grain full metal jacket loads that you're going to use for target practice. So if you want to uh, go with a defensive load that has the same feel as practice ammo, this might be the ticket. We just don't know how it's going to perform, although if you look at a lot of the gun forums today, here in November of 2011, you'll see a lot of folks that are still buying and actually carrying this ammo. So let's put it into the sim test from 10 feet and see what's going on with this so-called older or outdated technology. Excellent shot placement, and you might hear some water hitting the floor. That's not me. 18-inch block, and it passed all the way through that into jug number one, and it looks like it has stopped in jug number two. Not a good thing. You can see the reflection of my studio light, but as I was taking the jugs off the table, it did pass through the first two, bounced off jug number three, and landed right there on the table. Again. Low hit, but did it again. Ran out of water jugs, so I sacrificed a uh, bucket. There it is. Two for two. What do you think about that? Not much to see here because of the pass through on both shots, but I will give you a glimpse at the initial track on both of these. So the permanent cavity is essentially the diameter of the bullet, which is 0.355 inches or 9 millimeter. That is it. What else can I say? Uh, by the way, no denim in either of the hollow point cavities. I will give you a close up on that in a moment. And as I was loading that first shot, which I thought would be the only shot, I'm thinking, you know, that hollow point cavity looks very, very small, but it didn't collect anything. It really didn't blow anything through the track, or maybe just a little bit there, but no deviation to the diameter or really to the points themselves. You'll see that closely in just a moment. Low recoil, accurate, inexpensive, but you can get twice as many full metal jackets for the same price and pretty much have the same effect we did here. But seriously, there's an unknown that's in this format of testing, and that is bone. So in the real world, if you hit a sternum, rib cage, or something along that line, is this going to overpenetrate in that scenario? We don't know. But when we go two for two in testing using the same type of specs and format, for other types of cartridges, that's, that's a little bit of a cause for concern. At least I would hope it is. So there are definitely better bullets, better cartridges out there, including from Federal. Thanks for watching.